What's up, YouTube? It's Aaron Page. I'm back with another video for you guys today. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at a video by Frank Turek. Frank Turek gets asked this really tough question. I think it's one of his toughest questions just because of, of the type of question that it is. Okay, this question can be hard to answer. The question is, what happens to those that don't know Jesus Christ and they die? Do they go to heaven or hell? And yeah, it may seem simple when you think about it, but there's a lot that goes into it. Um, there's different answers across many spectrums of, of the faith. And so we're going to go ahead and check out this video. Let's see what he has to, has to say. I'm going to let the video play out, and then I'm going to respond to it at the end of the video. At least I'm going to try to. So let's go ahead and hop into this video right now. If you need Christ to go to heaven, what happened to those who had no exposure to Christianity? For example, the Native Americans in America's pro or Greek. Okay, excellent question. It's, it's really a question, what about those that have never heard? And that question comes up a lot, so uh, let's take a look at it, all right? Now, notice that this question is a moral question. It's kind of a way of saying that, well, it would seem to be unfair of God to not provide uh, an opportunity to be saved to everyone. And so it's impugning God's morality. But let's take a look at it. Uh, first of all, Christ's sacrifice is necessary for salvation because... As Paul even says in Galatians chapter 2, if righteousness could be achieved by the law, then Christ died in vain. Why is God sending an innocent human being to die if you could get to heaven any other way? He wouldn't. The reason that Christ's sacrifice is necessary is because an infinite being cannot allow sin to go unpunished. And we're all sinners. So he has to punish somebody else to remain just to allow us not to, not to be punished. Okay? In any event, so Christ... Sacrifice is necessary for salvation. In my first debate with Christopher Hitchens many years ago, all these debates are on our YouTube channel, he said, well, why did God wait until just 2,000 years ago? And I said, well, Christopher, Christ's sacrifice is retroactive. In other words, the people who lived in Old Testament times, even though they didn't know the name of Christ, were still saved by his sacrifice just by putting their trust in Yahweh, putting their trust in God. Even That's a good point. The name. Remember that point. Back, Remember that. Know the name. Anyway. Everyone knows that God exists through nature and conscience. So there's, some, there's nobody out there who's never heard. Everybody knows there's a God. But not everybody knows there's Jesus. So that's the second point. Some say that those who don't know Jesus can be saved by Christ's sacrifice if they seek God. Like the Old Testament saints, right? They didn't know the name, but they still trusted God. And Paul even says uh, in Romans chapter 4 that the gospel was preached to Abraham. And Abraham was de declared righteous by his faith, okay? So some say that, yeah, you can be saved without knowing the name of Christ, but I think the Bible makes it pretty clear you need to know the name of Christ. The more biblically consistent view is that God will give true seekers the truth about Christ so they can be saved. Uh, and an example of that is, is Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. He's already a believer in Yahweh. Why are we sending the Holy Spirit? Why is God sending the Holy Spirit over there to, to convince him that Jesus rose from the dead? If you can just be saved without knowing the name. Now, um, the next point points out that we know that there are many people who hear the gospel and don't believe it, right? It could be that those that never hear the gospel wouldn't have believed it anyway. In fact, here's the point. It could be that God has so ordered the world so that those who never hear the gospel wouldn't have believed it anyway. Why am I saying that? Because Acts chapter 17 seems to say that. Paul is preaching to the Athenians, and here's what he says. From one man God made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he determined the time set for them in the exact places where they should live. God did this, did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from every one of us. In other words, God has so preordained the universe that those who don't hear the gospel wouldn't have believed it anyway, right? That's what this could be saying. Now, I don't know if this is the way God has done it. I'm simply saying it's possible he's done it this way. I know how people are saved, so we risk all to get them the gospel. We know at the end of the day, nobody's ever going to be treated unfairly because God is just, right? Yes. God wants everybody to be saved. He wants us, everyone, to be saved more than we do. So if somebody can be saved, he's going to get them the information to be saved. But if people who already have the light of nature turn away from that light, then God is under no obligation to get them any more light. More light's just going to annoy them. They, they're just trying to suppress the light they already have. Let me just highlight this point by asking you guys a survey question. I ask this of every audience I'm privileged to speak to now. 
Uh, this is just for Christians in here. If you're not a Christian, it's not for you. But Christians, I want you to ask, or I want you to think of somebody right now whom you know is not a Christian. A friend, a relative, somebody like that. Everybody got somebody? Everybody got someone? Okay. Here is my question about the person you're thinking of. Is the person you're thinking of on a relentless pursuit of truth? They want to know if Christianity is true. Or are they apathetic or maybe even hostile to Christianity? How many people say the person I'm thinking of is on a relentless pursuit of truth? They want to know. Wow. I got two <laughs> half hands. Like, oh, wow. Maybe. How many people say the person I'm thinking of is apathetic or hostile? That Look is, that room. shows it's you the something. Same everywhere I go. It's 99 to 1. That shows you Most something. Most people aren't interested in God. Yeah. Most people are not on a truth quest or on a happiness quest. And they're just going to believe whatever they think is going to make them happy. And if they think God is going to get in their way of their happiness, well, so much for God, I'm going with happiness. Wow. Okay. So let's talk about this real quick. I won't be long. I will try to be as concise as possible. Okay. So first and foremost, I agree with his points one and two about how they don't necessarily have to know the name of Jesus Christ if they've never heard the name of Jesus Christ as long as they believe that there is a creator, Yahweh, and if they choose to follow in the path that the creator sets, if they choose to do good, if they choose to seek him, um, the Bible says that we are, we, we are without excuse because we have seen the divine nature and the creations that God has given us. I'll give you the, the verses so you can look it up for yourself. Okay, so, so first, we have Psalms 19 and 1. It says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. So it, it, it talks about how the, the creations that God have made, they proclaim his glory. They, they show his work, his craftsmanship. They, they, it's evident to us. It would be impossible for us to see the, the creation of the world and not to think that, th that a God didn't create it. It would, be, it would be hard for you to say this wasn't created by a person, but this was made by its on its own. This wasn't created by a divine nature or someone who's outside of this. It would be impossible to say that. And then for the next verse, I got Romans 1 through 20, or not, I'm sorry, I got Romans chapter 1, verse 20. It says, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. So that one is just show, it's showing us that even though you may not have heard of the name of Jesus Christ, because the Old Testament um, people that lived in that time, they didn't know who Jesus Christ was because he wasn't revealed at that time. They didn't know Jesus Christ is God. But even, even with that being said, you seeing God's divine nature, you seeing his creation, you are without excuse because in our minds and in our hearts, it tells us, it testifies that there is a creator and it's up to us to seek the creator. And so even though they may not know the name of Jesus Christ, they still know that there is a creator. And so they should choose to seek who the creator is and not live by themselves. There are there were people and there still are people that live for themselves and they make themselves the creator or they make a false god. And that is what happened in, in, in all of lifetime. There's been instances where we create we created our own God to satisfy our own needs and, and to empower ourselves when really we were supposed to seek after the true God even before they knew who Jesus Christ was. Now, for number three, I know that he, I'm pretty sure Frank Turek is a, Cal, is, is a Calvinist. And so, and, and for those that don't know what Calvinism is, it is the, the belief that the world and everything around it, and including us, we are all predestined. So that means that the people that are going to go to heaven were already predestined to go to heaven by God. And the people that were not going to go to heaven were already predestined to go to hell by God, essentially, because God already knew before the beginning of time that they would choose to, uh, to deny him and to not serve him. And so the people that did choose to serve him, he found them. And that's kind of what three and I believe the fourth um, answer for him kind of tied into. Um, and look, I, it makes it, it's a good argument. It, it, re it really is a good argument. There is some biblical scripture that you can pull up 
that talks about Calvinism, um, specifically Paul speaking. I'll pull it up right now. Okay, so in Romans 8, verse 29, it says, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. So this verse speaks on God pre predetermining certain people in the Bible to be who they are, to, to, to be in a certain place, to be raised up and brought up a certain way so that they can um, eventually come to the so so that Jesus Christ could eventually be in this world in a certain way in a certain manner at a certain time and so there and there's many more scriptures of Calvinism that you could call Calvinism um, but I'm just not going to go on that point because I'm not 100 percent sure about Calvinism yet um, it, it's, it, there's different arguments that in the Bible that you can go either way I'm not 100 percent I I know that there is some scripture on it so but anyways. I think that he brought up some really good uh, arguments against people that don't know Jesus Christ that die or people that have never heard of the name of Jesus Christ and have died, whether or not they can make it to heaven or not. So, um, yeah, man, it was a really good video. I, I thought it was pretty informative. So hopefully you guys liked it. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the video in the comment section. If you're new to this channel and you like what you see, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button, okay? And hit the post notification bell so you do not miss another video. And hey, look, man, for all of you, including my current subscribers, if you like the video, just hit the like button. It helps me get, uh, it helps YouTube to push my videos out to more people. So, hey, with that being said, I will see y'all on the next video, okay? My name is Aaron Page. I'm out.